Hello Cake Flix viewers, welcome to episode number three of Buttercream Queen. I'm gonna hopefully turn you guys into a buttercream queen. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make these lovely cactus cupcakes and succulents using a variety of different nozzles and different colors and loads of different techniques. So they're jam packed and you can use these same techniques on a cake as well, so really, really great. I'm also gonna be using um, my brand new product called Cake Cream, which is a Swiss Mind Buttercream mix. If you haven't heard of it yet, it is a really, really quick way of making Swiss Mind Buttercream. Normally, Swiss Mind Buttercream takes up to an hour to make and it can involve thermometers and heating of things and cooling, separating your egg whites. With this, it takes all that fuss out of it. All you have to do is add water and butter and it takes about six to eight minutes to make from the start to finish. So it's really, really easy. You can also use the mix to create so many different things. I've been making meringue kisses, macarons, sponge cakes, so many different things all on our website. So you can check them out. Um, I'm also in our lovely shop in Ireland. Um, our shop is called Sugar Sisters and it's my family's company. So uh, they keep me busy. <laughs> so um, yeah, I hope you enjoy this episode. And please guys, make sure to share this live with all your friends and all the groups. Get everyone involved and I really hope you enjoy. Okay, welcome. So we're gonna get straight into it. I'm gonna be making a special type of buttercream. So it's not the normal type of buttercream that I make with my mix. It is a Korean style buttercream. It's still got the same ingredients in it, but the method is a little bit different. And the reason why I love to use this type of buttercream for piping is because it's really glossy. You don't end up with like cracked edges. It's really stable. There's no, there's no air in it basically. So it's just perfect for piping. So I'll show you how to make that now. And then we're gonna color it up and then we can get going on piping. So to start with, I am using a 200 gram bag of cake cream. Pass all over, <laughs> great start. Um, so I'm just using the vanilla flavored here, but you could use the salted caramel, uh, the lemon tart, you could use, what's the other one? The raspberry as well. Um, so I'm just gonna add that into my mixer. Like so. Then I have 125 mils of cold water. As cold as you can get it from your tap is fine, as long as you can drink from your tap or you could have some water in the fridge uh, from a bottle and you can pour that in as well. And we're just gonna mix this on low, just to combine it. If you have like a splash guard for your mixer, I would recommend it. I literally can't find mine, so it just means that stuff won't come flying up in your face, <laughs> which nobody wants. So just roughly mix it, it doesn't have to be perfect. And then I've got some butter and it's cold butter. And just for the quantities, don't stress too much. They're all on the back of the packets. So if you're not sure, just check your packet before you use it. So I'm just gonna add this in now. If you want cold butter, everything we're using needs to be nice and cold. And normally when I make my Swiss Mind Buttercream, it has to be room temperature to warm, but only when we're doing the Korean style, does it have to be cold and it feels weird <laughs> but the results are amazing with it so right now it just looks a little bit like a mess uh, so the liquid and the butter is totally separated uh, but what I want to do now is I'm gonna grab some ice and this just helps keep it cold I'm just gonna prop that up as best I can and then obviously if you have a, a cover or a splash guard for your mixer put that on um, I'm just going to get you Andrew to come in close so people can see exactly what I'm talking about here uh, because it does look like a mess you might be looking at it like there's something wrong here but basically what we want is all that water and liquid and the butter to become one so we're going to mix it for a good while so it does take a bit of time to do this but you can just have it on in the background and you could be doing something else so you can keep yourself busy uh, so I'm going to cover this up now and I'm going to put a cloth over it just so I don't splash everywhere. And when it's finished, I'll let you know how long it took because it does take a little bit of time. I'm just gonna turn it up on full now. And keep that ice next to it the whole time. And we're just gonna mix that up. And maybe you can see it from the glass jar down there. Oh, 
Okay, so we're just going to speed this up and then we'll come back when it's done and I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so it is, is ready. So it's combined and it's really, really nice and smooth. You want to make sure all of that water is incorporated. So I'm just going to take my whisk off. If you find there's a lot of air bubbles as well, you can pop on your paddle attachment and, and even if you have the, um, you know, the paddle attachment that has a silicone paddle on it, they are fantastic if you have one of those. I actually haven't got one from my mixer yet, um, but if you have one of those, you can put that on and it'll just get rid of any like air bubbles in it that you don't want. So I'm just going to take this off and put this mixer down below. So now we're going to colour up some buttercream. So cake cream actually comes in a range of colours, but I find for like doing smaller projects like this, this it's really handy just to make up batch white and then colour it. So I'm going to show you how to colour it as well as uh, if you wanted to, you could make up the, the packets, but obviously you'll have a, bi a big amount of it, so it's not really the handiest for it. So I definitely would always colour up. So I've got some lovely colours here. So I have uh, a couple of greens, and then I have purple and pink for a bit of colour and then I have the Wilton white white because I want to kind of brighten the colour a little bit because it is yellowy with the butter added. So I'm just going to divide this out in between my bowls. Let's start out with some green. So this is Progel Gooseberry. I love this colour. I use this quite a lot. I'm just going to put it in the middle. We want our colours to be nice and strong for the cactus or cacti. And I love these little spatulas. I know you guys love these little spatulas too because they're just so handy. And even as it's in your bowl, you can kind of just rub it against the side of your bowl and it'll help get rid of any air bubbles that may have got incorporated. And it just means when you pipe, it'll just create a smoother finish. And you can probably see the, gla the, the gloss and the shine off of this. And the great thing about this as well, another benefit of it, is that it's cold. So unlike normal buttercream, it would be like room temperature. And because this is cold, when you're holding it in your piping bag, the heat of your hand isn't going to uh, make it too soft too quick. So you have a little bit more time to work with it. So I love, love, love this colour. Hopefully you can see that. Okay. Oh. And you can see the shine. Mm. So we have a Andrew, I didn't introduce him. No, okay. You don't exist, Andrew. No. <laughs> Andrew's here behind the camera. I'm the same. So that's the uh, Pro Gel in the gooseberry. And then what I'm going to do is colour up some, some darker green. well so for this one I am using the color splash forest green so this is a bit of a cooler kind of tone so I'm put in a decent bit here and let's see how this one turns out and when you're coloring always start off with a smaller bit first don't go in with loads of butter or loads of your colouring first if you're not confident and you're not used to using that particular colour. So I know I've used this colour, these are the main two colours that I would use is gooseberry and then that the forest green because I think it's a nice combination of green. So when you, even when you're doing any type of floral arrangement with buttercream, I think it's nice to have a couple of greens. You can always add more. Yeah. So definitely start out small. I kind of went off tangent there. <laughs> uh, and then you can add more because you can't take it away once it's in. So that's a lovely, it's a colder green. So there's a bit more of a bluey kind of tone to it. So it's a nice contrast of greens there. And then we'll do some pinks and purple. So I know I don't need a lot of the pink. And the same with the purple. That should be loads. And then I want quite a light pink. 
because of the yellow actually in the buttercream, I probably will put a little bit of the whitener into this as well. It'll just kind of help neutralize the white a bit. Or the yellow, not the white. <laughs> I'm doing two things at once. I just think the green and the pink just go so well together. So these would be the little flowers on the cactus. I think that's perfect. And you see it hasn't gone too peachy in colour because we add a little bit of white. It's a nice pastel pink. Then we're going with the purple. And I'm not going to go too dark on the purple again. Oh, might not have a choice now. <laughs> that was really liquidy. So all I can do is I can just scoop a bit out. And nobody will know. And I'm going to rinse that off in the sink. Well. What I might actually do is just add a little bit of pink into this just to warm it up. I think it's a bit kind of mucky and grey looking. So a little bit of pink should lift it a little bit. It's always good to like play and just try out different things. Always try it out obviously on a small bit of your buttercream first. Just to try and get those colours. So you see that's warmed it up nicely. I'm just going to go a little bit more purpley to darken it a bit more. I think colours are so important. You get your right colours. And actually go watch Natalie Porter. She was the one who really taught me how to, not how to use colours, but like how to the importance of them and she'll teach you guys I know she has a episode or a series now on cake flicks where she goes through all the different colors and teaches how to mix them the importance of colors so a really really important thing to learn all right so that's a lovely purple now I'm delighted with that and then for the last bit I only need a tiny tiny bit where I want it to be white there's actually loads and um, down a spatula, so I just need to clean the spatula again. So let's see how much we can lighten this with my nearly empty tube of Wilton White White. <laughs> You'd think I would be able just to walk into the shop to grab some, but I'll just squeeze out as much as I can here. Okay, let's see how we go. Yeah, so this is already whitening it. Big difference. I'll show you a little comparison at the end so you can see. And it will get whiter as well the longer it sits because the colours activate more as time goes. So I'll just show you side by side. Yeah. You see the difference? So that's the Wilton White White. Any kind of product that has uh, titanium dioxide in it will whiten it for you. So. Hold it over the bowl. Yeah, can you see that okay? Alright, cool. and just a quick one before we go to a break as well, um, I'd say we mixed that, I told you I was going to tell you how long we whisked that for and I think it was about 10 minutes I'd say it was on the go, so it does take a little bit of time, might even take more than 10 minutes, um, but just be patient with it, you know, you can do some washing up or something in the meantime. Maybe you can hear it when it starts to... Yeah, you can hear it, the, the sound of it changes, it'll go from like 
scrambled eggs, like a really clumpy scrambled egg to like a really fine scrambled egg. And then it'll just kind of really start to bind together and it's really nice and thick. Um, and just make sure all of that water is combined. There shouldn't be any kind of water residue and uh, then you can colour it up and pipe. So we're going to take a little break um, and then we'll get back and we're going to start piping some flowers. See you in a sec. Hi guys, welcome back. So I am going to be showing you how to pipe our first cupcake cactus. So this is what we're gonna do. Can you see that okay? Mm -hmm. So really, really cute. So it's just three little cacti, <laughs> because the plural of cactus is cacti, not cactuses. Cactuses. <laughs> Uh, so uh, and so what I've topped these off with is a lovely little rose and what I learned just tonight from googling um, the difference between cactus and succulents is that cactus have flowers on them didn't know that I didn't know there was a difference apparently there there is a difference so um we're going to start off by piping out some roses because I want to pop these into the freezer so they set um, it's just much easier for the to handle them then and then once they're on your cake then you can leave them come back to room temperature and you can use them as they are so I have our lovely pink buttercream that we made and I'm going to pop it into a piping bag and I'm using a PME nozzle it's called the 57s is that okay it's really small and basically it's a, a thin teardrop shape and it's a really really small one there are loads of different teardrop sizes you can get I wanted a really nice and small one for the top of these uh, obviously you can get bigger so you could do like a whole rose on the top of a cupcake for example so just pop that into your bag and then we're just going to cut a small bit at the bottom just so it pokes out I always end up cutting too much off so hopefully this doesn't fall through yep we're good and then we're going to fill our bag So you see I'm not using a lot because they are just little, small, tiny little roses. Okay, I'm going to drop that. And so what we want to do now is be very cautious about how much we're handling our buttercream because it will go soft with the heat of your hands. If that happens, you can just pop it back into the fridge for a little while. Um, some people suffer with really hot hands and unfortunately when you're piping buttercream flowers, it is a nuisance. <laughs> Um, so what I would advise is don't fill up your bag too much. Uh, you should only just have like um, a palm full of buttercream just so it sits comfortably in your hand like that. Um, and then when you're not piping, put it down. Um, and then you can just keep refilling your bag and that way you should end, shouldn't end up with too liquidy. If it does get liquidy, just pipe it straight out into your um, container. And if you have more, you can just fill it back up again as a little way around it. So there's a few little hacks there. But uh, just keep going, you'll learn as you go. So, are you nice and close now? Can you yeah. see this? So I'm just gonna pipe a little, we're gonna call it a blob. Just a tiny little blob, like that. And I'm actually just gonna cut this bag because it's gonna annoy me. It's too much excess. So keep your bag twisted all the time. And that'll make sure that uh, it'll keep pressure in the bag and it'll just make it easier to squeeze. So keep it twisted and keep that pressure and you can stop and start and like twist it again to increase the pressure. And basically you'll see on your little nozzle there's like a thin side and a thicker side. Basically you want the thicker side to be on the base. So, oh also I haven't even talked about what I'm using. This is called a flower nail. Um, and basically it's just a flat surface with a little pin at the bottom so you can literally just twiddle it around on your fingers and pipe away and then I've just secured a little bit of parchment down with a little bit of my buttercream as well okay so I've done my blob and I'm gonna take my nozzle I'm gonna do this a few times as well so you don't need to 
remember it straight away. So I'm just going to start to squeeze and then I'm going to rotate it as I go. And my no the angle of my nozzle is just slightly tilted. So I did that the whole way around so it overlapped. And now we're going to start doing individual petals. Can you see this okay, Andrew? Yep. Yeah. So we're going to go one. And we're going to do two. Okay, so we've created a nice little centre there. And then, so that'll be like a little rosebud, so we can take it a bit further. We'll do three. One. Two. Three. So that's another nice little small one. So you could leave it at that, and I think that's kind of like the size on this little guy over here. So I think we will leave it at that. And we'll do another one. Just make sure you have enough buttercream to stick it down. Okay, make sure your piping bag is angled so it's not straight. Your nozzle, you want it kind of angled in. Go all the way around. And then we'll go one. Two. Then we'll go for three. One. Three. And now we're going to go up to five. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. So it's a nice bigger rose then. Okay, so I'm going to pop these into the freezer. Well, Andrew, you might pop those into the freezer, maybe. Just really quick. They should set up really nice and quickly because they're so teeny. Um, now, you can lift them up as well by using a scissors. And what you do, basically, I'm just going to show them this real quick, um, is just put the scissors down the base of it and close it, and you can lift it up and then bring it over to the top of your little cupcake and place it down and open the scissors out. But I just, it's so much easier just to pop it into the freezer and that way it's solid and like you can't mess it up then um unless you you sat on it or something <laughs> so um next what we're going to do is we're going to pipe our little cacti so using our darker green so that's the forest green i fitted it with a nozzle this is a gem 3es so it's got loads of little spikes on it uh, to create our lovely shape and I'm just using chocolate cupcakes as well because I thought it looked a bit more like the ground. Again, keep your bag nice and twisted and tight. Can you see this okay, Andrew? Back now, yeah. So start with your bag touching off the surface of your cupcake and we're going to squeeze and then release. And do them different sizes. So we'll do a small one. Just adds a nice little contrast and then we'll do the one that's kind of in the middle of the two, like so. How easy is that? And then I've got our lovely um, white buttercream and I'm, I've just cut the bag rather than putting a nozzle onto it. You could definitely put a nozzle onto this. Uh, I'm just being lazy because it's so small. And basically, I'm just going to go around and put tiny little dots. And it just, I think it makes it look really, really cute. So I'm kind of doing that every two uh, rows as I go, otherwise I'd be here all day long. So they're definitely time consuming, but I think if you're doing them at a sugar pace, it'd probably take a little more time. I think the little dots and that should probably take the most amount of time. And if you didn't want to do like a detailed rose like that, you could just use a small star nozzle and just do a little blob instead. Like if you just wanted like a quicker version of it. There's always easier routes you can go. And like you can leave out the dots as well if you wanted. Or if you have the patience of a saint, you could use little sprinkles. I definitely think this is quicker. Just 
So who's enjoying our... Well, we're here in Ireland and we have a terrible summer. There has been no sun. All of, all of our sun was in spring, wasn't it? Which actually was great because when we were at our lockdown was during spring, so... You get the odd day or two where you think it's that back and then it's straight back to red. Yeah, it's just... I think we had two days there where it was nice and it's now rainy and dark again. <laughs> But that's what you get for being in Ireland. It's a particularly bad summer. Okay. I won't continue the whole of the back, you get the idea. Um, so Andrew, will you go grab those roses then? Mm -hmm. And they should be done. So we're doing well. They're really cute. I hope you're enjoying it so far. And just to recap, I'm using a brand new product called Cake Cream. It's a product I developed um, it's a Swiss meringue buttercream mix and you can use it for creating loads of other things as well such as the um, This is called Korean buttercream um, and you can make meringue kisses. You can make macarons, pavlovas, everything So um, it's a really really cool project product and um, if you make Swiss meringue buttercream from scratch yourself You'll know how long it takes to make so this just it's so much quicker so these are Nearly set probably could have left them in a bit longer, but uh, I don't want to be boring you and just sitting around waiting on them in the freezer uh, So I'm going to use the scissors just to kind of show you as well if you didn't want to put them into the fridge They are quite solid though. No, not gonna risk it. So I'm gonna put the bigger one Just using my scissors and just close your scissors underneath it and just use it To bring it across and then you can just Push it on and because it's frozen I should be able to just gently push it in to secure it. And then we'll go with this little guy. I just think these are so cute. And then our last one. So if they were frozen a bit more, you could literally just pick them up as they are. Or if you have a, a little palette knife for the pointy edge, you can use that just to help lift it on. And because it's fully set, you can push it in to secure it and you know that it's going to be secured. But how cute do they look? Delighted with them. So um, I think that brings us to our next little break. So we'll take that little break now and then we'll come back and we'll make the next one. See you in two minutes. Okay, welcome back. So we are going to be making this lovely cupcake now. So this is mostly succulents and then a few little embellishments around the end. I, they're like little flowers. So that's when, remember I was saying how you could use just like a, a star nozzle to create little flowers for the tops of the previous ones we did. So this is what I mean by that. So you can just use a star nozzle for that. I'm gonna show you how to do all that now. So I'm gonna teach you how to uh, two-tone your piping bag. Um, so we're going to two-tone it with our purple and our green and so I've just rolled my piping bag down I'm not putting a nozzle on this particular one, but you can of course put a nozzle onto it as well I'm just going to take a little bit of the purple and I'm going to put it into my piping bag and just going to run it along one side I'm just spreading it along one side in there like that. Can you see that okay? Yep. Then I'm going to grab my other colour So I'm going to go with the green and then I'm just going to do the same for the opposite side. So 
then you can squeeze it all down the end. And just for this particular one, which is, this is what we're gonna make. So it's just a little type of succulent. And we're just gonna cut a small hole in the bottom of our bag. And sometimes you just have to squeeze out a little bit until the two-tone appears. So there we go, both colors are coming out. So I'm gonna get my flower nail again, and I'm just gonna attach my parchment paper down, and then using this piping bag without any nozzle. You could definitely do this with a nozzle as well, I just don't think there's any need. And I actually think because it's not a perfect round, it actually looks a little bit better. So can you see all this okay, Andrew? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna start in the center, and we're literally just gonna squeeze up and release for the center of it. And then basically we're just gonna build these out all the way around the center. And when you wanna stop, you basically just stop squeezing and pull the bag away. And then once you've done a whole round, we're gonna start again and do another round and just do it in between. And you can see the lovely two-tone color coming out now. And so I'm going around again. Until you're happy. Don't ask me what the names of these are. I don't know. They're just made up. <laughs> so um, I'm just going to pop this down here. And then we're going to make this other type here. So it's kind of more like a flowery looking one. And to make up our piping bag for that, I did a two-toned effect as well. So I just ran a small bit of white and then I did the other half in the gooseberry green that we made. And I put on a, another uh, type of uh, rose nozzle. This is a slightly bigger one. I think it's the one, two, four. 104. Wilton 104. It's actually a really, really great nozzle for starting out. It's a really, really nice size. And I'm just going to again just get some parchment paper and pop it onto my flower nail. Make sure you keep the bag twisted and the pressure. And we're going to start off by basically. So again, we want the fatter side of the nozzle to be in the center and the thinner side to be on the outside. So all the time, the outside of your petals are nice and thin, like a real petal almost. For some types of succulents, you can actually turn it the opposite way around and you can get that like, nice thick edge. Cause you know like succulents, they do have a thicker edge rather than like a delicate little flower. So to start off with this, we're just gonna draw kind of like a C shape. Okay. And then we're gonna put the next one on top of this. And we're always bringing it back to the center. And we're literally just gonna layer these on top the whole way. And I'm changing the angle of my nozzle so it kind of starts flatter and then we go more upright as we go around. Okay, so a nice little cute little guy. So next I'm gonna ask Andrew, because I made up a couple of these already and they're in the freezer. So if Andrew you could go grab those. And then we'll start to build our cupcake. So they're coming together really, really nicely. I'm very, very happy with them. They're super cute. And you could use a lot of the same techniques I'm teaching you. And you could do different colors. Like you could do like, I don't know, it'd be really cool maybe to do like a neon um, succulent cupcake, just for a bit of fun, something different. Um, so we're gonna stick on our lovely pieces here. Now these are nice and frozen. And just to help stick them on, I'm just gonna put a bit of buttercream down. Don't worry if it's not looking too pretty because it's all gonna cover it up anyway. And we're gonna pop our first succulent down. And we're gonna do this kind of like around in a circle. Just give it a little gentle little press to make sure it's secured. And if you need to add more buttercream, just to make sure that it attaches well, you can do that. And don't worry about any gaps for now, we're gonna fill all those in.
And last but not least. You can see how much easier it is because you can kind of manage them when they're frozen. Okay, so now we're going to take, um, I have a piping bag here fitted with a uh, small star nozzle. It's the PME 44 nozzle. And anywhere that you can kind of see any gaps in there, I'm just going to pipe a few little blobs. And they kind of look like flowers, which I really, really like. I'm going to do a few random then on the base of the cupcake too. You can squeeze right inside. Cute, isn't it? And actually what you could do then as well if you wanted, it's really fancy, take a little bit of your white in your piping bag and you could just do a few little dots in the centre of your little flowers. So, oh, that one's a bit too long. <laughs> and you could even like put some sprinkles in the center if you wanted, but I'm actually really happy with that as it is. So that is the next, uh, that is this cupcake and we're gonna do the next one then. But before we do start, we're going to do a little break. So we'll be back in a minute. See you in a sec. Hi, my name's Paul Bradford. And today I'm going to be taking you through all the different stages to create these fabulous cupcakes, cookies and cake pops. So first up is the cupcakes. So we're gonna show you how to bake these lovely, beautiful vanilla sponge cupcakes, and then we're gonna finish them in two different styles. We've got the buttercream style, and I'm gonna show you how to do the buttercream from scratch, how to add color, and of course, pipe it on top of the cupcake. And then we're gonna move on to the sugar paste or fondant, same thing, and we're gonna get these beautiful little faces and little decorations on top of the cupcakes. Then we're gonna move on to the cookies. So we're gonna show you how to bake them from scratch, then how to decorate them with run out royal icing and then so many little fun ways to decorate them. And then the last thing are these beautiful cake pops. They're so fun and you can see here we've got the more children style fun ones and then over here we've got the posh ones for the posh people who want to have some champagne and a wee cheeky bit of cake. So come on, let's get started. Okay, welcome back. So we are now going to make this lovely cupcake. So it's kind of like a rose like I was explaining before, but we twisted the nozzle around the other side so that the fat end of the nozzle is on the outside. So you can see that it creates that really kind of thick effect. And you can obviously use the same techniques and use it on the thinner side and you'll get a nice kind of rose. And if you use kind of succulent colors, it'll be like a succulent as well. And then I added a few more little of the embellishments so it ties everything in together. So we're gonna pipe this one straight onto the cupcake this time. Um, if you prefer, um, some, I find it quite can be quite difficult to pipe directly onto the cupcakes. But if you prefer, you can just do it onto some parchment paper as well. You need a bigger flower nail um, and then a bigger piece of parchment and then you can pop it into the freezer and then before you stick it down, just put a little blob of buttercream down. So again, I'm gonna use our lovely gooseberry and I'm gonna use the Wilton 104 nozzle. I think I nearly cut it too short. Yeah, not, I don't, I'm not confident with that. Always cut it too short. So uh, learn from my mistakes and don't cut it too short. <laughs> so we'll start off with a smaller bit. It's always when I'm rushing that I do it as well, which makes it 10 times worse. Okay, so we've got our lovely gooseberry buttercream here. Mm. 
And you can also make all these same flowers and put them onto a cake as well. It would look really, really nice on a cake. So you'll see what I mean now. So that's your thinner side and that's your thicker side. Before what we were doing is the thinner side was on the top, but now what we're gonna be doing is the thicker side is gonna be on the top. Does everyone follow? Okay. So we wanna be able to hold our cupcake over to one way so that we can then twist it back, if that makes sense. So you have enough room to move it around as you pipe. So that's as far as I can physically twist it, unless I start twisting my elbow out. So I'm just gonna do a little bit to base it on. And so we're gonna be twisting this way and it's gonna go around. And I'm gonna start off with two bits for the center rather than trying to do a whole one. I'm just gonna twist them around on each other. So that's the two for the center there. And then we're gonna go with three. One. Two. Three. Okay. And then we'll go to five. And each time I'm doing this, I'm kind of tilting the nozzle out every time so that it's kind of opening. If that makes sense. And you're probably learning how to pipe now. Yeah, I can take over in a minute. Yeah. And we're just going to keep layering off the petals as we go. All the way out. Another handy thing about piping onto parchment before as well is it's quite hard to get it bang in the center if you want it to be bang in the center. I kind of want mine just off a little bit and then we're going to add in a few little embellishments. So I think that'd be good. Maybe one little more here. Okay. So there it is there. They're quite forgiving as well. You don't have to stress too much about them. So we're gonna go in with our two-tone purple and gooseberry here. And we're just gonna add in a few more little bits coming over here. Oh. And cause these are on the other cupcakes as well, it'll just kind of tie it in really nicely. Okay, and then we get our pink. the left here. Don't be afraid to layer them on top of each other as well. Do a random one here and there. Looks quite nice. So there's that one. So I'll show you all of them together. There's loads of different piping techniques there I've taught you. They're a good bit of fun I think. And you can play around with different colours. You could do different sizes of everything, like you could do little mini ones of these with little tiny little flowers on top. So there's lots to learn. So again, we made this using my product, it's called Cake Cream, um, and it is a, a mix for making Swiss Mine Buttercream. So you can make buttercream, your Swiss Mine Buttercream in like six minutes rather than it taking nearly an hour. So definitely worth a try. And also comes in a range of colors as well. Um, so to get those really deep, vibrant colors. And we do it in a range of flavors as well. So we also have lots of new exciting colors and flavors on the way, so stay tuned for them. Um, and you can buy them on the cake slash cream website and also from Sugar Sisters and from our stockists as well. So I, I hope you enjoyed. And I hope you like them. Well, that's it. We're done with today's Facebook Live. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you learned lots of tips and tricks, and I really hope you get to try cake cream. You can go onto our website and buy it cake-cream.com, and you can also buy it from our stockists. And um, so, just to recap, what is cake cream? Because a lot of you ask. Uh, it's a Swiss meringue buttercream mix and it's ready in minutes, probably takes six to eight minutes to make, so much quicker than making it from scratch, which can take up to an hour. Um, it comes in a range of colours, so you can get like really deep red, you can get that really deep black, um, and it comes in like pretty pinks and all of that. Loads more colours coming as well. And we also do a range of flavours that were just launched 
nearly a month ago now, I think, or less than a month. And so we have salted caramel, lemon tart, uh, we have raspberry, and then we have our normal vanilla as well. Um, so yeah, please do try it out. It really, really is great. You can also use it for making loads of different things. I've been making more in kisses, um, macarons, a sponge cake, so, so many different things. Um, so as ever, please share this Facebook Live, get all your friends to re-watch it and uh, hopefully they can pick up some tips along the way as well. That's it for now, see you in a couple of weeks.